as oil sands, it's often tarred with a broad brush. Development versus environment, framed as incompatible solitudes. Of course, for those who actually live near an oil sands project, the reality is more nuanced. Take Port Mackay, for example, a vibrant First Nation community fighting to maintain a healthy balance of both. The CBC's Briar Stewart explains. <laughs> Right in the heart of the surging oil patch lies a small community, torn by the massive changes surrounding it. Fort Mackay First Nation was built on trapping. Now it's fueled by industry. It was August 9, 1977, first day at Sinkoo. Joe Granjam still remembers how he landed his job in the oil patch. So I went in there and he told me, ah, Sinkoo's not hiring right now, so I'll put your name in anyway. So I said, okay, we filled out a form down there, and I was just, and I went, I went back home. And next morning, 8 o'clock in the morning, knock, knock on the door down there, and there was this uh, recruiter. And he said, uh, are you ready to go to work? Working with industry changed Grand Jam's life, and it did the same for this community of 700. For years, the First Nation fought oil and gas development with little success. We'll fight for as long as we're alive if they don't pull us under. By that time. Then in 1986, it launched the Fort Mackay Group of Companies. It owns businesses that provide services to industry. And each year, the group brings in more than $100 million in revenue. Our ability to be independent financially is, is something that we've worked for a long time. And uh, now we're reaping the results of our work that we did in the last 25 years. Construction is booming. There's a new hockey rink and an amphitheater. New neighborhoods are being built for people like Miranda Beaton. You put your jacket on? She moved back to Fort Mackay for a good job and a place to raise her young family. But even she feels conflicted. I've been given so much opportunity living here and um, thanks to a lot of the oil companies. But in turn, you know, are there other things at stake, like the environment and the air and all that stuff? The rapid growth inside the community doesn't compare to what's happening outside of it. Fort Mackay is surrounded by development. My grandpa used to sit in the right across down there, right where that point is down there. And Grand Jam saw that change firsthand. Today now, after all the industries are here, we, we can't even eat. I think we're allowed to eat two fish a week, and we can't drink that water. Instead, he and others head 50 kilometers northwest to an area they call Moose Lake, another part of their traditional territory still untouched by industry for now. They're slowly coming up north. You know, they're trying here. Yeah. Alberta's energy regulator recently approved a new operation here. If built, the Dover project would produce 250,000 barrels of bitumen a day, and the community fears it would just be the beginning. We don't want to see what's happening around here. We don't want to lose what we have. It's the only place we have left that's sacred for our people. And that's why we're asking the industry to be careful. They're also putting their money behind their message, something the community says they couldn't afford to do before. Now, for the first time, Fort Mackay is headed to court to fight the approval of an oil sands project. Their goal is not to prevent it from going forward, but to make sure it does on their terms. What they want is a 20-kilometer buffer zone around the lake. Alberta's regulator ruled against that, and the community is appealing. The company behind the project is Bryon Energy. A spokesperson says they're now having extensive discussions with Fort Mackay to more fully understand their concerns and want to develop a long-term relationship based on mutual respect. What we'd like to see is for them to give us a break. For Grand Jam, he says his community has little choice but to push for more say over what land gets developed. You know, it's not only money. We've got to think of our health, too. Now he's retired and just finished building a cabin up at Moose Lake. There's leases all around our reserve down there. What's going to be left? We're all going to have to be office workers, I guess. You know, it's all our traditional training, all our traditional ways, and that, all that's going to be thrown away. For him, that's a real fear that no amount of new wealth can resolve.
Briar Stewart, CBC News, Fort Mackay, First Nation. Coming up, Claire will have your weekend forecast.